Hi, just a little video this evening. Um, nice little multi-tool that I've got here. Um, this is the Boca Tech Tool 7. Um, just to start off, I tend to like to take some sort of UK legal uh, multi-tool with me in my work bag. Um, not so much for pocket carry, but just something extra for my work bag. Typically for pocket carry, I favour the smallest of blade, which is practical, something like the, the Victorinox Waiter. But, as I say, in my work bag I like to take something a little bit extra, something with a bit more functionality, maybe a saw, bottle opener, can opener, scissors, that sort of thing. So, I was looking at what else was on the market, and one of the things that came to my attention was the nice little range of tools coming in from Boca. Now, obviously, they come in the, the fairly standard magnetic closure boxes, um, fairly nondescript instructions, and then the little unit itself. Now the tech tools probably came around probably, oh I don't know, last year. Um, they come in a number of variations, um, numbered between 1 and 7. Um, not always uh, according to the number of tools, but they, they vary between um, sort of one tool, which is simple, simply a blade, or up to uh, seven different, uh, certainly folding elements. Strangely, I think the one with the most tools is a Tech Tool 4, but not quite sure how they designate the numbers. Now this one comes in a nice black micarta finished scale. Um, this is what they call the uh, the city finish. Um, the other finish that they have in micarta is a green sort of olive, olive drab uh, affair, um, and they call that the outdoor. Now recently they bought out um, a carbon fibre um, laminate, which looked really nice, and I was really, really tempted to pick that one up. Um, but what I did notice is that it didn't quite have the, uh, the the gradient on the scale there. And you know, whilst that's okay for a single sort of bladed tool, when you've got a big handful like that, um, I thought it would probably go better with a nice um, sort of rounded finish on that. So as I say, um, nice little tool. And if we just run through the different functionality on this, um, and my cat doesn't sort of completely interrupt us, um, we'll, we'll, we'll move forwards. Okay, so probably the star of the show is the, the main blade. A good sort of spear point, I think I'd call, call that. Nice sort of belly on it. Um, really nice sort of, sort of functional sort of belly, which yeah, really helps get, get into those tasks. Um, Nice sort of semi mirror polish, sharpening notch, which is uh, if you ever watch my videos, you know that's something I always like to see, and also a full flat grind. Um, good size blade, that um, good spring tension on there. And if you compare it to the uh, Victorinox and the uh, the Leatherman, which uh, also sort of follow me around in my bag, that's a pretty decent sized blade, and probably one of the use more useful blades out those two, or out those three rather. Now the blade is made out of Sandvik 12C27, uh, which is sort of a fairly commonly used uh, steel. It's sort of around the sort of same quality of a uh, 440C, as I understand it. I think it might be slightly more stainless in its properties, but you know, certainly a well tried and tested steel. I think it's what more use in their in their blades, and and they're pretty well regarded blades. So perfectly adequate steel, full flat grind. Reasonable spring strength there, and very easy access with the thumb. Comfortable in hand. Good blade on there. And the next tool you come across is the saw blade. Now that's got a lot of similarity um, in teeth pattern and general design as you'd find on a Swiss Army unit. Very similar. The only sort of difference really is that it's slightly thicker stock. If you can pick that up, and it's got marginally longer reach, which can only be a good thing. It's got the traditional sort of offset tooth pattern, which is pretty effective for doing some light chores of wood. Okay, so that's that. The next one up, and what I would say, these are all very easy to get out. Normally there's a bit of compromise on these things, but they come out with great ease. It's a very good sized pair of scissors. Really nice functional scissors there. A fairly light tension, but it's a good return on them. 
And what I particularly like, I mean, maybe we'll pick this up on some close-ups, is this little cam arrangement here. You see that the spring is captured in there, and it means the spring. The scissors can't ping round, so they're all re always ready for you. And I think if I can demonstrate on the Leatherman here, my spring's a little bit gunged up, but the, the scissors can fold round like that, so they're not always there, uh, ready at your fingertip to use. They'll spring round the way you don't want them. So sometimes that can be a bit of a pest. So they're really nice, the functional scissors reasonably nice long jaws and as I say that cam arrangement is really useful. Then we're on to the, the smaller tools so here you've got the flathead screwdriver, can opener and this little chap here is a wire stripper what you need to do is you trap the wire in between there and the handle and you can sort of pull off the outer and on this side you've got what initially was a slightly puzzling tool. It comes out as sort of, I guess what you'd call that sort of, can't quite describe what angle that is in degrees, but it comes out not straight ahead. It's not a sort of 180 degree sort of fold out. And initially it looks sort of a little bit puzzling. It's not razor sharp, although it is sharp. It's it's grooved, it's sort of got teeth on it. And, and what that's for is, is for safety, or not safety, rescue for certain functionality. So you can slip that against the skin, under some clothing, under a seat belt which is trapping trapping someone in the car and rip it out and I think that that would be quite functional in that regard and actually a nice sort of angle of approach for that, for that function. Little flathead screwdriver there and then the last one on this side is a little fold out lanyard. I think personally I'd prefer if I was going to use a lanyard I'd prefer to have a sort of little ring similar to what you have on the uh, waiter there which isn't quite so conspicuous and more readily available but if you wanted to sort of attach that to a belt loop that's pretty good for the job there i'm um, just coming back to the oh, the bottom opener there i think there's probably a little bit of a missed opportunity maybe to sort of put a bit more edge on the tip there and get it as a can opener but maybe i'm wrong and then finally on the flip side you've got a corkscrew decent size obviously a very good grip on that so you can put some pressure on that put some pull on that to get the bottle cork out and the one thing which I'm a bit disappointed about is that that does not have the same um, pitch in the threads as Victorinox user, uh, units so you can't swap in this little tiny little screwdriver which I find quite useful you can't get that in there doesn't screw all the way in which is a bit of a shame it would be nice if they'd use the same pitch um, certainly from my point of view that would be useful then the last tool on this side and actually probably the only tool that I struggle to get out ever is the awl close that up one of the strange tools on these sort of units is that you know you look at it and you think when am I ever going to use that but actually for sort of bodging holes and something sort of to lace something through um, to tie some sheeting down with paracord, sort of bodging it through some sheeting. It's actually really useful. Um, sort of widening sort of little holes in wood. Never quite what the intended purpose is for. Never for like stitching sails or... I think that's probably what it's, in it's intended for, but... You know, it's still a really useful tool to have on there. Okay, so the last tool is the glass breaker. Now you get one of those on all the tech tool units. Um, Looks pretty functional. I'm not quite sure what the uh, what the material is that it's made out of. Certainly got a nice little point on it. And I guess you only ever really find out how useful that is until you need it. So unfortunately I don't have any car windscreens to break. Um, not without getting in trouble at least. So yeah, that's, that'll have to wait. Um, as I said, nice contoured micarta scales. Um, very comfortable in the hand. So a nice grippy texture, nice sort of pattern texture to it. And the last thing really to look at there is the, is the pocket clip. Now initially I looked at this unit and thought, well actually that, that's pretty big for the pocket, pretty wide. How's it going to sit? It actually sits really comfortably um, and that, that holds it nice and secure, holds it flush, doesn't allow it to twist in the pocket. Um, but as I say, yeah, the, the purpose of these multi-tools for, for my, my reasons are really... Um, 
for work bag rather than pocket carry. You can obviously flip the pocket clip from tip up to tip down, um, but only on that side. Okay, well, we'll zoom in for a couple of little close-ups and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, I hope that you found that, found that useful. Um, if you like the video, obviously click thumbs up. If you're interested in sort of EDC kit, um, knives, boots, denim, that sort of stuff, um, fountain pens, you know, if the things that I interest me, interest you, please subscribe, please check out my channel. I'd love to have you to subscribe to it. Um, and as I say, we'll get in for some close-ups and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, just coming in for some close-ups now. You can see the nice sort of, pa sort of pattern in the micarta there. Nice contouring. As you can see there, glass breaker tip. The main blade. The saw. Really nice little unit. Okay, hope that you find that useful. And uh, please like and subscribe.